This is Lambeau Field in Green Bay, where today one of the oldest rivalries in the National Football League, the Chicago Bears against the Green Bay Packers, is renewed for the 116th time. Both teams coming in here with two and four records. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, and alongside me, a young man who played in 20 of these pair and backer, Bear and Packer games is Johnny Morris. And, Johnny, there's something special about this oh, rivalry. Oh, there certainly is. First, I, I'd like to say that I think we look better down the field than I we do up here. But it is something special. 1921, before Prohibition even began, the Bears and Packers were playing football. It's always a special game for these players, and I'm sure it's going to be that way today. We expect to see a lot of Walter Payton. He's going to be a busy young man. Yes, as you know, he leads the NFL in rushing with 563, 653 yards, I should say. He's all over the place, and I wouldn't be surprised if he carries 30 times today. The Bears are going to try and run the ball down the Packers' throat, and we'll see what happens. On the other hand, the Packers feel they have the quarterback in the future in Lynn Dickey. Lynn Dickey is Bart Starr's man. He uh, completed 11 of 15 last week, had a good game against Tampa. He's six foot four, 215 pounds. He's Bart Starr's kind of quarterback. He says he likes him, and he's going to give... Mr. Dickey a chance all year. All right, two and four, these two clubs come in here. John, if you have any playoff hopes, you've got to win today. I would say so, even though the Vikings have shown uh, some signs of weakness, uh, you go in 2-4, come out of this game at a 2-5 record, your chances are pretty slim of winning the division. So the two teams are both 2-4. One of them is going to be out of it after this game. We might say that the Packers without Will Harrell today, he's not dressed because of an injury. They don't have a lot of exciting, explosive runners, the speed balls, and Harrell was one of them, and he's not playing, so that hurts the Packers. They do have Odom, who is a long bomb threat, but uh, the Packers got to be hurting without Harrell. Okay, John, we're ready to get this game started. Let's go to the field now. As kicking off is going to be the Packers. Pat Haggerty will be working the game today. Al Conway, Walt Peters, Bob Beeks, Jim Poole, and Bob Lewis. The men in charge of this 116th meeting between the Packers and the Bears. Chester Marcole will be kicking off. Back deep, a young man who last week returned to kick off 84 yards for a touchdown against Atlanta, Brian Weichnagel, the former Ohio State standout. What a rivalry this is, and Marcole is ready. He hits it down the middle, and Weichnagel's got it at the 10, 15, 20, 25. Weichnagel heads to the 32-yard line. Brian Feischnagel to the 32-yard line, and flying up was Herb McMath, number 61 for the Packers to make the stop. So Chicago expected to run the ball right at the Green Bay Packers. They are running the ball very, very effectively. They're third in the NFC in rushing, fourth overall. There's that offensive line. Albrecht, the number one draft pick from California. Jackson, Piper, Sori, and Lick up front. Bob Avellini, the quarterback. Walter Payton and Roland Harper, the running backs from the 32. This is Roland Harper, 35, 40, and Harper's got a first down out to the 45-yard line. Mike McCoy, the right side cornerback, coming up to make the stop, and Harper, who comes in here 12th in the NFC in rushing, starts out rather auspiciously for the Chicago Bears. Yes, he did, and Walter Payton was the man who threw the key block for the Bears on that play as Harper got the big yardage. You look at the Bear receivers, rather Scott and Latta, there's Bob Abilene. What a gutsy quarterback he has been. Yeah. Roland Harper and Walter Payton. That was a 13-yard pickup on the play. First down to the 46. Bob Abilene giving off to Payton, leading the NFL and rushing, and Payton across the midfield strike to the 48-yard line of Green Bay. Payton coming in here, as John said at the top of the show, 653 yards. Jim Carter, Johnny Gray coming up to combine on the tackle. It's going to bring up a second down and five as Peyton picks up five yards. There defensively is that forward wall. Thus far, 23 sacks. Butler, Roller, Purifoy, Toner replacing Gary Weaver, who's out for the air. Jim Carter and Fred Carr, the linebackers. Second down, five. Peyton, and Peyton's got the first down. Look at him run across the 40 to the 35, and Peyton's all the way inside the 30-yard line. First down, Luke and McCoy making the stop. And Walter Payton, who may carry the ball 30 times before the day is over, is impressive. And he never quits running. Watch this play. There's a big hole. Harper with the block on Carter. You'll see Bashnagel came across to throw his block. And then Payton busts out of a tackle. James Scott trying to throw. And Walter Payton, you have got to get him with two arms and about five guys to bring him down. The Bears are running the ball, no doubt about it. I tell you, John, Payton just won't give up at all. He ran over Buchanan on that play. A 19-yard pickup. First down inside the 30. This is Peyton again, and this time Peyton is close to the 25-yard line. Middle linebacker Jim Carter coming off of two seasons of injury. 
making the tackle for the green and gold. The ball just short of the 25, where it's going to bring up second down, still six yards to go. I tell you, this Chicago Bear offensive line has come together so quickly, Johnny Morris. They're young, and they're going to get better. They are a very young team. Most of them are second and third year men, but the same thing applies to the Packers on defense. They got a lot of young people in the defensive line. Second down six. This is Johnny Musso, the former Alabama standout. And Jack Party told us he was going to use Musso quite a bit today. And he is to the 21-yard line before his forward progress is stopped. Chuck Bradley, a tight end, number 81, comes in with the play information from the far side of the field. James Scott who comes into this game third in the NFC in receiving, has checked out at this juncture. Abilene is leading the NFC in touchdown passes with seven. He has thrown eight interceptions. Third down and a long one to go. Musso and Peyton, the running backs. Bob Abilene off to Peyton, and Peyton's got the first down and then son. At least to the 16-yard line, and Johnny Gray, the fine free safety for the Packers, fine up to make the stop. And that offensive line really opening some holes. They are. And, you know, the Packer defensive line has really improved on sacks on rushing the passer. And I think this is one reason the Bears are taking the ball on the ground, trying to run at these defensive linemen that are so good at rushing the passer. And you can neutralize a pass rush for later in the game if you can run at them here and get them to be tentative. So far, the Bears are doing that. At the 17-yard line, first down, Chicago. Abilene, Musso, Musso to the 15, 14, and fights his way to the 13-yard line. I want to remind everybody, this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Green Bay Packers and the National Football League is prohibited. Second down now and six yards to go. And you know they haven't had an empty seat in this stadium since 1959. What a rivalry. Here it goes to Walter Payton trying to swing wide. He's in trouble. Tom Toner's there. He gets away from him, and flags have been thrown everywhere. Steve Luke come, coming up, forced to play very well. Toner also. Let's see what the flags are all about. Okay, you can see Musso leading the way as Payton goes for the end, but the Packers got penetration, knocking Reedy Sorry off stride. He couldn't get out, and then Toner came across, and he was enough to, to hold Payton up for a moment, and then the Packer pursuit, and you can see about six Green Bay Packers there. Great pursuit by the Packers on that play. A penalty going against the Chicago Bears. Pat Haggerty, our official, getting everything decided down below. Steve Luke really made that play, John. He came up and forced the issue in a hurry. And we've got Toner in there. As you know, Weaver is out. He has a bad knee, so Toner is a little bit on the spot. He's got to a, a fill a gap. Foul. Clipping, number 62, offense. Clipping call, that would be Dan Jiggets, who is a backup. There's Bart Starr, Bert Gustafson, Dave Hanner, the defensive coordinator, assistant head coach. It's going to bring up now second down. 21 yards to go. A draw up the middle to Walter Payton, and Payton getting some of that yardage back inside the 25-yard line. This time it was Carr and Toner, the two outside linebackers, coming up to make the tackle. Bart Starr's young offensive team hasn't been able to move the ball, but his young defensive team, you see the earmarks of something happening. Well, uh, to be honest, as you know, the Packers started a couple of years ago almost from scratch. They were devoid of draft choices, and Bart Starr is, only has uh, 13, 14 players left from when he took over the team, and that's a big transition. It's going to take them a little while. 12 of the 13 draft choices made this year's team. Third down, 15 yards to go. Abilene looking to throw. He's got time, and in zone, McCoy. Mike McCoy intercepted the one-yard line. Mike McCoy is second interception of the year, and at the one, the Packers take over. Well, this was a case of Avalini throwing a little bit too late. He made his decision late as the Packers put on a little pressure, but nobody broke open, and finally he throws the ball, and Bashnagel had been open, but the coverage was there, and McCoy made the interception, and good defense by the Packers stopping the Bears on the first drive. That's got to be key for them. Got to be key. They got the ball back, and no points scored against them. However, they can't afford a mistake. So, an interception by McCoy. The Packers have it to the one-yard line. We have no score with 10.26 to go first quarter. The Packers in a very precarious situation after Mike McCoy, with his second interception of the day, stopped the first drive of the game. The ball at the one-yard line. Eric Torkelson and Barty Smith, the running backs behind Lynn Dickey. 
Dickey actually inside that one yard line. This is Torkelson and he's close to being tackled for a safety. Very, very close. Torkelson just did get back into the playing field that time. Well, that's the chance you take, Gary. They're running off tackle there instead of something straight ahead, either a QB sneak or a dive. And when you run off tackle and slant, there's a chance that somebody can come through. And sure enough, there was Rydalch there and Don Rees, 57, both to make the tackle. And he was right up over that goal line. It was very close. Well, you can see the football almost touching the goal line. Second and virtually 10 yards to go. Dickey this time to Barty Smith, and Smith gets a yard, and that's all. Looked like he had some running room, and all of a sudden, Billy Newsom, a veteran, former Baltimore Colts standout, picked up from Buffalo this year, closed in, and now it's third down, and still 10 yards to go. Well, that time, at least they ran a straight-ahead play and got out a yard or so. Now, what do you do? <laughs> what do you call in this kind of a situation on your own two-yard line? Look at them. They're huddled about as far back as they can get. In fact, the back of that huddle is out of the field of play. Third down, 10 yards to go. The Packers would like to get some breathing room. We're looking at Eric Torkelson, number 26. A give to Barty Smith, and Smith hammers it out, but it's going to bring up fourth down as Doug Plank flying up from the safety spot to make the tackle. And now on fourth down, the second leading punter in the National Football Conference, David Beverly, the 42.6 average is going to kick under some pretty tough circumstances. Yes, Gary, he's going to be back at the very back of the end zone, and he's going to have to hurry and get it off. The Bears will probably try some kind of a, a punt rush. Back deep, we have Lynn Walderscheid and Steve Schubert as a twin safety. Beverly, if he'd step out of the back, he would have a safety called on him. No score, eight and a half minutes left to go, first quarter. He's got time, and he hits it high. Coming over is Schubert. He's got it to 45 to the 40 and Schubert brings it back out to the 36 there's a flag on the play so they came out of there in reasonably good shape under from very tough circumstances a 42 yard kick that time by Beverly kicking it deep from his own end zone but the penalty now they're discussing that it's going to be clipping against Chicago for the Bears will be backed up even further and you got to say the Packers came out of that remarkably well to put it bluntly, they came out smelling like a rose. They're going to be uh, back in their own territory. The Bears will have it on their own 45-yard line, and they had the Packers backed up to their own, too. So pretty good exchange for Green Bay. Number 59 on the run back. That would be Gary Campbell, the former Colorado standout, guilty of clipping. So the ball moved back to the 45. And we're going to see if we can pick up that clip on a replay. There it is, Campbell, 59, at the bottom of your screen as he hit Bob Barber from behind. So from the 45, the Bears had their other drive stalled at the one, start again. Here's Musso, and Musso across the 50, 45, and Johnny Musso to the 42-yard line, first down Chicago. Carter and Gray combining on the stop, and Chicago's running the ball effectively. And watch the influence, watch 77. As Butler went out and just almost created the hole for Johnny Musso to come through. And finally, Toner gets a hold of him, but Musso scraps before two or three Packers bring him down, including uh, Carr and Carter. 13-yard game. You know, coming in here, Musso had carried the ball only four times for seven yards, and already he's got 22 yards today. First down from the 42. Avellini to Peyton, and Tom Toner rides him down for a two-yard pickup of the 40-yard line. Tom Toner trying to fill the shoes of Gary Weaver is out for the year. Toner, a sixth round draft pick out of Idaho State, is going to bring up second down and eight from the 40. Chicago coming in here with a leading rusher in the NFL in Walter Payton. Harper, 12th, their third in the NFC in rushing. On the other hand, Green Bay, that's been their big problem, rushing the ball. In fact, the first four games, they didn't rush for 100 yards combined total. Second and eight. Avellini, pressure put on, gets it off to Latta, the big tight end, Greg Latta to the 35, the 30, 25, and the big guy moves the ball down to the 20-yard line. Johnny Gray rammed him out, and Greg Latta, who can run for a big man. That was a tight end screen, and you'll see number 70, Dennis Lick is the man who does the job. The right tackle as Latta comes out, and there comes the two-man screen for the Bears, and there's Dennis Lick throwing his block against Gray, and then down the sidelines goes Latta, and finally knocked out of bounds by Gray. Good recovery by Johnny Gray, staying with the play, but it's a first down to the 20. That was a 21-yard pass completion to Greg Latta. 
Abilene to Walter Payton. And Payton inside the 20 to the 17. Fred Carr, the right side linebacker, making the stop. And right now, Chicago is impressive. Fred so Carr was impressive well. on that one, too, Gary. Carr came off his weak side linebacker spot and prevented that from going for 10 or 12 yards. Caught it from the side. He's got extreme quickness. Carr's done a good job. He's played, I think, 132 straight games for the for the Packers in the past nine or ten years. As you look at Bart Starr and Zeke Redkowski, who send the plays in for the Packers. Second down now. From the 17. Abilene. Latta. And Latta is dropped at the 11-yard line. Good reaction that time by Steve Luke, the strong safety. This was part of the game plan that the Packers expected, that they would throw to Latta a lot. Latta and uh, the Bears uh, may throw to the backs quite a bit. As you look at Jack Pardee, who needs a victory very bad, two and four. Of course, Bart Starr's in the same situation, although more people thought that the Bears had a chance to win the division than they did the Packers. Packers are rebuilding, as are the Bears, but the Bears had a pretty good year last year, seven and seven. Latta now with two catches has 17 for the year. Third down, two yards to go. And firing off is Noah Jackson, the left side guard. Let's see exactly what happened. It's going to be five yards against Chicago. Sh Chicago's had some penalty problems, which brings up a point, Johnny. They have been penalized a lot this year. Many more times than the Packers. The Bears have 49 penalties this year. The Packers only 30. As Dave Roller comes in, Roller was saying he's the man who tipped out some of the clippings of Don Reeves we last week. Start, number 65, offense. As you heard the penalty there, but Reeves made some quotes that the Bears should beat the Packers with no problems, and it was all over the Packer locker room. So we'll see how that works out. It's now third and seven, Walter Payton. And Payton to the five, and Walter Payton finally run out of bounds there. He has a first and goal now for the Bears. The quickness of Walter Payton. Now you see why Walter Payton is one of the best. You see a good block by Musa. Watch Scott right there. 89 kicked his man in. There's the block right there by Scott as Payton dips to the outside, and 24 Gray finally knocks him out of bounds, but not before the Bears get down to the five-and-a-half-yard line. Would you believe that Walter Payton already has 53 yards and eight carries? He's headed for a big day at this rate. First and goal now at the five. Musso. Musso gets a yard, maybe two, inside the five. Johnny Gray's been making a lot of tackles in the early going. Steve Luke and Johnny Gray for the Packers call themselves the Hit Brothers. They will hit you. They can hit some people. They took care of Burrow down in Houston on one shot. They really got him. They can hit. Second and goal now at the four. Two tight ends now for the Bears. Latta and Chuck Bradley, who they picked up as a free agent back in September from San Diego. Bradley is 81. Bob Abilene is second and goal to four. Abilene to Musso, and he is very close. He's in for the touchdown. Johnny Musso scoring his first touchdown of the season. Cracks in, and the Bears take a 6 to nothing lead. And the Bears are hit simply hitting people. You watch Noah Jackson and Walter Payton block as they take Luke out of the play, and then Musso cuts back behind the block and just drives up and over for the touchdown. The Bears are on the board. Now watch 34 and 65 as they double-team. Out goes Luke, in cuts Musso for the touchdown. Good, simple, fundamental blocking by the Bears. They're really hitting. Bob Thomas to attempt the point after Brian Bashnagel the hole. 534 to go, first quarter. High snap, and he's going to have trouble. Here is Beisnagel trying to salvage the play, but to no avail. So they just didn't get the ball down. It was snapped high. Beisnagel tried to get it placed. He could not. Let's look again and see just how high the snap was. It was fairly high, which has to destroy the timing as he reaches up, juggles it momentarily, and there was no chance, a good decision not to kick it, but Bashnagel could not take it over. The Bears settled for a 6-0 lead over Green Bay. The Chicago Bears with a 6-0 lead, a 55-yard drive and eight plays, a four-yard run. And this Bear team's impressive in the first quarter. And a very important game. Minnesota and Atlanta are tied 7-7 in the second quarter. As you know, the Vikings are 4-2 going in. 
I'll tell you, Atlanta's the surprise of the year. A kick to the far side of the field. It's going to be short, picked up now by Steve Wagner, and Wagner brings it out to the 30-yard line and is able to carry tacklers with him to the 32. Wagner, the second-year man out of the University of Wisconsin, and at the 32 now, the best field position the Packers have had. They trail six to nothing. And Gary, as you know, a couple of games ago, Bart Starr started calling the plays. They, of course, come from upstairs down through Bart Starr and Zeke Redkowski and signaled out to Lynn Dickey. And he felt that he wanted to take a lot of the pressure off of Dickey of having to call the plays and just do the mechanics. And so far, he feels it's working out pretty well. Torkelson and Barty Smith, the running backs. Ollie Smith to the bottom of the screen. Back to throw. Lynn Dickey, he's got time. This is Ollie Smith. Smith can't hang on at the 45-yard line. John, that brings up a point. You and I were discussing this before the game. You feel like a lot of receivers don't use their body like they should to catch passes. They try to hand catch too many. I think that has become a tendency in the NFL the past few years. That they say a ball is up about your face level to stick your hands up and catch it rather than take that little leap and catch it in the bread basket. And I think that's one reason you see that all around the NFL there are, are more drop passes the past few years. All right, second and 10 from the 32-yard line. 5.20 to go, first quarter. Chicago 6, Green Bay, nothing. Dickey, fumble by Torkelson. Torkelson fortunately got it to come back to him, and he gets back about a yard short of the line of scrimmage. Doug Buffone making the tackle. Hey, they tell me Buffone may be playing as well as he's ever played. And he still has those high-top shoes on. <laughs> Watch Torkelson. He actually, uh, that ball took a nice bounce right back up to him very alertly. Headed back the other way, but the bear pursuit wasn't as good as it should have been. <laughs> and there were bears back there on the other side waiting for him. Well, they actually lost about a half yard on that play. Third down, let's make it ten and a half to go. Last week, Torkelson had 73 yards rushing. That's the best output of any back for the Packers this year. Now they come out with only one set running back. Third down, a little more than ten. Here's Dickey again. Look out. Near side, Ollie Smith. And Ollie Smith got it for the first down. Ollie Smith with his sixth catch of the year. Virgil Livers defending on the play. And on a third down, Lynn Dickey converts it. And the Bears were putting pressure on with a blitz. Dickey held his ground. Here came the blitz. He took, took his punishment, got the pass off, and it was right on the money to Ollie Smith. Good play by the Packers. Ollie Smith out of Tennessee State. He was acquired for a number 12 round draft pick from the Oakland Raiders. And this young man who caught 20 passes last year, they're high on him. First down now, just across the 45. Dickey off to big Barty Smith, and Barty Smith's got some running room. He crosses the midfield, strike to the 47. Don Reeves, and you mentioned Don Reeves. I saw clippings of Don Reeves all over Green Bay this week. Well, they made a big thing out of it. Of course, Don Reeves got a little frustrated and rapped the Bear fans and said the Bears were a lot better than the Packers. And really a good guy. He just said a lot of things that got carried away. And uh, we'll see if it affects the Packers. So far, the Bears seem to be the team that are up. Second down, three. A pickup of seven by Barty Smith. This is Barty Smith again, and he's got a first down. The former Richmond standout at 6'4", 240 pounds, running behind the block of Larry McCarron. Good blocking by McCarron as you watch Torkelson and Barty Smith. McCarron gets on Don Rees, 57, 54 on 57, and pushes him back as Barty Smith just bulls through for a first down. Good fundamental blocking by the Packers, and especially McCarron, the center, who got the game ball last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bart Starr is very high on him. He thinks he may be the most improved lineman. From the 42, first down, Green Bay. Lynn Dickey, play action. And Ollie Smith, the intended receiver, but nothing doing. As that time, the pressure made Dickey change things in that backfield. You know, the Packers are known as a blitzing team, but we see the Bears coming after him today. Well, the Bears have got to do a few things because they don't have the pass rush that they did last year. They had so many sacks last year, and they're not getting them this year. Wally Chambers is not playing very much because of the bad knee. So they've been trying to uh, make up for it. As you see, that 7-7 Minnesota-Atlanta score with some blitzes. The Packers blitzed a lot last week, but they haven't blitzed that much throughout the season. So they come to a second and 10 from the 42. Dickey Here again come. to throw. Here comes the blitz. Newsom after him, and Newsom got him. Billy Newsom with one big arm just dragged him down back at the 46-yard line. That time, Mark Concar having a tough time holding the veteran end out. Everybody came for the Bears that time. Watch the bottom of your screen. 
as Newsom got by Mark Concor, 79, and down went Dickey with no chance. Good rush by Billy Newsom, whom the Bears picked up uh, very late in the preseason and brought him in, has done a fine job. He was a member of that Super Bowl championship team in Baltimore. That was a 12-yard loss on the play. Third and 22 from the 46 of Green Bay. Dickey. Got protection, a flag on the play, and Ollie Smith tried to make the catch at the 40-yard line, but to no avail. But a flag thrown in the vicinity where you anticipate a holding call. And that's what it's going to be, holding against Green Bay. The Bears had five defensive backs in. In fact, the Packers will sometimes come with six, but the Bears had five backs in, and it's really tough to throw down the field on them. you got to throw short and under. Offense, decline, fourth down. 71 was Mel Jackson guilty of holding. That'll bring up fourth down. They're going to decline the penalty. They want the football, and Beverly will kick from the 31. 2.50 to go, first quarter. Chicago 6, Green Bay nothing. Walderscheid and Schubert back deep for the Bears at the 15-yard line. High snap. Beverly kicking it to the far side. Coming away with it, Walderscheid. And Walderscheid up to the 35-yard line. Chicago with the football as Bert Aston was over there to make the stop for the Green Bay Packers. There's our score before a sellout crowd here in Lambeau Field. The Bears leading the Packers six to nothing. Sunday, the fun starts at the grand opening of Archie's Tavern as the help walks out and the family fills in for a bubbling high ball of hilarity. Sunday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. This is Lynn Dickey. Wanting to get a shot at that football once again. A 32-yard kick by Beverly. The Bears have the ball just across their own 35-yard line. Musso and Peyton, the running backs, behind Avellini. This is Johnny Musso. He's in trouble as Mike Butler had a hold of him. He got away from him, but he got only about a yard, and that's all. And Mike Butler is quite a story. Their number one draft pick out of Kansas. He Big, is isn't be, he? He's going to be something else. And uh, there's a score. Washington 20, Philadelphia 10. You think the Redskins don't need a victory? The Redskins right now are 3-3 in the Eastern Division. Dallas 6-0. And, oh. and there's Cincinnati 7 to nothing over Houston. From the 36, a gain of a half yard. Up the middle, here comes Peyton. To the 45, he may go. He's to the 35, the 30. Walter Peyton is cut off. Just outside the five-yard line is coming over there in a hurry was Willie Buchanan. And Walter Peyton just lightning quick in the secondary and Tom Toner missed the tackle 59 is the man that had to get him he was the one to fill the hole he got to, gets his arms on him but Peyton is so elusive he just broke away and then turned on the speed and finally it was a foot race he pinned him in the corner and Buchanan knocked him out of bounds but Walter Peyton has got to be he's got to be pushing 100 yards already well that was a 58 yard run and you're absolutely right John he has 111 yards and nine carries he may have some day we huh? still have in the two first minutes quarter. left in the first quarter <laughs> Walter Payton, boy, he's had 13 100-yard days. He just now registered his 14th of his career. What a career he's having. The ball just outside the five, first and goal. Avellini, here comes Payton. And Payton is in for the touchdown. Unbelievable. There's Noah Jackson giving a little tap on the head, number 65. It was simply extra effort by Walter Payton. That's why he's the best in the NFL there is today. Watch him as Musso leads the way. Now he's going to get hit a couple of times. It goes up and over. And then the contact is made here by Gray. And then he just drags two or three Packers in, including McCoy, Gray, and Carr into the end zone. He is unbelievable. That's all. 12 to nothing now. The Packers trail Chicago. Musso with a four-yard run, and now Walter Payton with a five-yard run. Bashnagel the hole. Bob Thomas this time has the placement up and through the upright. And the Chicago Bears, there's a flag on the play at the six-yard line. Right now have a 13-0 lead, as Pat Haggerty indicating a penalty, a legal procedure against Chicago. So they're going to have to try it again. We'll hold it right here with 1.58 left to go in the first quarter. You know, the thing about Peyton on that last run, he is tough inside, but he can go outside. He can block. We saw him block earlier. There's nothing he can't do well. That's correct, and he's not considered a real big back. He's uh, about 5'10", but he's put together well, 205 pounds. If there ever was a back that could run without blocking, no back runs without any blocking. But if he does it sometimes without blocking. 
All right, we're going to try it again after the five-yard penalty. Thomas boots this one up. Practice makes perfect, and he got this one, too. So now it's 13 to nothing. The Chicago Bears with the lead. One minute, 58 seconds left to go in this first quarter of play. Peyton with 117 yards. The Chicago Bears leading 13 to nothing. That only took three plays. 43 seconds to score. The reason was a 58-yard run by Peyton. He eventually scored. He now has 117 yards and 10 carries. And remember what Bart told us yesterday? He said, if we can stop Peyton, we got a chance. Well, they're in trouble right now, the way things are going. Ball bouncing around, picked up. Running the ball out is Jim Colbert. And the Oklahoma rookie brings the ball outside the 25 to the 27-yard line. So the Packers, who had been moving the ball in the last possession, now trailing 13 to nothing. It's been all Walter Payton. There's some other scores. Washington leading the Eagles. That's a big game in that Eastern Division of the NFC. Los Angeles over New Orleans, 7 to 3 in the first quarter. Bo Rather was shaken up on that last play. That's why the delay in the action right now. Rather being helped off by Steve Schubert. He walks off a little, you know, a little shaken as he goes to the bare bench. The ball at the 27 now. Torkelson, Barty Smith, the running backs. Dickey has Ollie Smith and Randy Vataha at the bottom of the screen as his wide receivers. A first down from the 27. Dickey gives off to Torkelson, and Torkelson is spinning his way, and he is hit by Doug Plank. Doug Buffon was hanging on, and Doug Plank finished him off at the 32-yard line. You can see Bo Rather there on the bench was shaken up a little bit. It looks like somebody might have rung his bell. He's checking. You can see the trainer and doctor. They're checking uh, figures for him to see if his senses are okay. See if he can count the fingers, right? That's right. One, two, three. Second down, five. A pickup of five by Torkelson. Give to Barty Smith and Barty Smith coming out close to the 35-yard line. Packers running the ball. They had a penalty that stymied to drive earlier. Right Elch, Don Rees making the tackle. Jack Pardee feels that Right Elch right now playing as well as anybody in that forward wall. He's a good, steady pass rusher. He's not spectacular. Good, steady against the run, and he's been their most consistent. The Packers are in danger. You know, their record is only two and four, but they've been in every game this year. So far, they're not in this game. Bert Aston has now come into the tight end, along with Rich McGeorge on the short yard. Each third and two. This is Barty Smith trying to get the first down, and he's got it. Good running effort by Barty Smith. They straightened him up, but he would not go down. Wayman Bryant and Doug Plank combining on the stop, but it's a first down for Green Bay. Barty Smith, who's battled back from a career of injuries. He came in as a rookie, hurt in the Coaches All-America game. Last year had knee problems. He's kept coming back, and now the starting fullback. And I see Steve Odom is now in for Green Bay. Number He's been their 84. big play man. So they have three of them in there. Odom, Vataha, Ollie Smith. Three wide receivers in on this play on a first down, and Odom can't get it. Steve Odom trying to turn around to the ball at the 47-yard line. It'll bring up second and 10. Odom this year. Really has had some spectacular plays. A 95-yard touchdown against Minnesota, 40-yard touchdown against New Orleans. And uh, here's a pass that is back behind him a little bit. He puts his hands up. Of course, that one was so quick, he didn't have much chance to think there. But if it hits your hands and you miss it, it's going to go ricocheting right through. If it hits you down in the pads or in the stomach, you're going to hang on to the ball. Second down 10 from the 39. Dickey. With the protection, he hits Eric Torkelson, and Torkelson is fighting for that first down. I believe he got it. Don Rees wrestles him down, but Eric Torkelson fell forward for the first down at or above the 50-yard line. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Chicago Bears, 13. The Green Bay Packers, nothing. As the Packers now, after an 11-yard pickup, trying to climb right back in to this football game. Lambeau Field. <laughs> uh -huh. How's that for a move, huh, John? That's speed. That is quickness. <laughs> that is quickness. All right, we start the second quarter. It's 13 to nothing. Chicago, the Packers just completed a pass for a first down. They're just short of the 50-yard line. 
Eric Torkelson, Barty Smith, the running backs. Ollie Smith and Vataha, the wide receivers for Lynn Dickey. Dickey off to Barty Smith, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Coming over that time was Reeves, the middle linebacker. He's the number two tackler on this team. Last year, leading the Bears in tackles. Just that time across. He, excuse me, Gary. That, that time he got behind Mel Jackson was pulling, the pulling guard that time. And I watched him last week. He did a heck of a job on a lot of the pulling uh, runs that the Packers did last week, and they got a lot of yards rushing. That time, it didn't quite work. But we're going to take a look at Mel Jackson. I, he's impressive. He's number 71 in the right guard position. We now have Nate Simpson in the running back field. He is the number five draft pick this year. And this is Nate Simpson. Simpson is not going to go anywhere because Wayman Bryant brought him down in a hurry. That Wayman Bryant, we were down on the field earlier. He is big, and can he move? They say 6'3", 239. He's got to be bigger than that, John. He's at least that, and he's, he's bigger than that. Plus, he has a lot of speed. Plus, he's wearing high tops. That's got to slow him down about three times seven seconds. That makes him look bigger, though. You know what? <laughs> That's right. It makes him look rougher. Doug Buffon, Wayman Bryant, both linebackers wear the uh, high top shoes, which looks kind of antiquated, but a lot of people feel that it's still good for more support for the ankles. It's third and 12, and now the Packers again bring in three wide receivers, Vataha, Ollie Smith, and also Steve Odom. Smith and Nate Simpson, the running backs again. Dickey back to throw on third and 12. And Barty Smith at the 49. Coverage that time by Mike Spivey. As the Bears coming in with that fifth defensive back. Fourth down, the Packers will have to kick. And Len Dickey still looked good on that because he went forward in the pocket very nicely. There's a lot of heat by the Bears. He went forward and spotted his receiver. And he has the instincts. That's what Bar Starr is talking about. It's his plain four-man rush where they do a little stunt crisscross between them. Star goes, I mean Star, I mean Dickey goes forward in the pocket and knows where his receiver was. Still a good play even though it didn't work. So now Beverly will kick from the 35 of Green Bay. Walderscheid and Schubert deep for Chicago. He hits a good one. Fair catch called for by Schubert. He makes it at the 15 yard line. So the Chicago Bears with a 13 to nothing lead and 13 28 to go before halftime have the football once again after a 38 yard kick by Beverly who may have a long afternoon kicking the ball frequently. Who has over? Well the Chicago Bears have the football once again and Walter Payton and company have it just inside the 15 yard line. Payton with 117 yards already with 13 and a half minutes to go in this first half. This is Johnny Musso instead, and Musso brings it out to the 19-yard line. Tom Toner making the tackle. Musso has seen a lot of playing time today after really being used very sparingly up to now. He's had a seven-week rest since the exhibition season, and he's ready. Uh, one of the reasons is that Harper is a little bit banged up. Roland has been really banged around. Uh, as you look at Walter Payton, who already has 117 yards, 11.7 per carry. But Harper's been banged up, so Musso's getting a chance to play a little bit. Have a change in the secondary for the Packers. Steve Wagner has replaced Steve Luke. Second down, six quick pitch. Here comes Peyton. Peyton across the 25, the 30, and Peyton all the way out to the 40-yard line. And Tremendous you should watch blocking. the block, yes. Watch number 69, Reevy Sori, who will be leading on this play. He's going to hit Wagner, number 21. Dennis Lick is also pulling the right tackle. Now, Peyton comes from behind. Here comes Sori's block, 69. Down goes Wagner, and Peyton takes advantage as Dennis Lick kicks his man out. A big hole, good blocking by the Bears. A 20-yard run by Peyton. They mark the ball just short of the 39. Steve Luke now has come back into the ball game for Green Bay. Peyton, 137 yards. Avellini to Peyton. Look at him jump around, would you? And he made a play that looked like a long loss into about a yard gain. Mike Butler and Steve Luke forced that play very well. And here shows the determination of Walter Payton. And you have to have pursuit on Payton. As you're going to see here, as Butler came across to mess things up, and so Payton was driven to the outside. Toner misses. And there is Luke, who finally gets the tackle. But it could have been a five-yard loss. He made yards out of it. But the Packers did pursue on that. Good pursuit by the interior line of the Packers. Mike Butler crashing in, showing that strength at 6'5 and 270 pounds. Second down, virtually nine yards to go from the 40. Avellini to Musso, and Johnny Musso hammers it out to the 45-yard line. Jim Gano in the lineup now at one of the linebacking spots, and Mike Butler makes the tackle at the 45-yard line. 
If this continues like this, Walter Payton may have a record day. Well, I, a few weeks ago, I said that Walter Payton is the kind of guy that could someday rush for 300 yards in a game if they if they carried enough times. This, who knows? <laughs> well, right now, 12 for 138 yards from the 45-yard line. Third down, four yards to go. Ashnagel, the ball game. He's at the bottom of the screen. Abilini back to throw. He dumps it off and tender for Musso. Incomplete. Coverage pretty good that time. Clarence Williams, but also his big Mike Butler again storming through. He's going to be something else. The Packers have a few. Whenever you build a defense, now I realize the Packer defense is not doing that well. The Bears are running the ball down their throats, but they've showed signs on defense, a good young defensive line, the guts of a defense. Any coach will tell you he'd rather have a good defensive line than he would linebackers or backs if he had to take one or the other. A defensive line is where you build a team. And that's where the Bears have had some problems this year, and they're trying to get that straightened out. Bob that's Parsons with his first kick. Excuse me, John. Kicking from the 31-yard line. Johnny Gray is back deep. Parsons hits it very, very high. Gray coming up to make the fair catch if he can find some room and does at the 22-yard line. So at the 22, Green Bay has the football. 11 minutes, 18 seconds to go before our halftime. Chicago 13, Green Bay nothing. 33-yard kick that time by Bob Parsons and New England and the Jets. Boy, the Jets have been surprising. They have 17-10 in the third. From the 22, the Packers trailing 13 to nothing. Holly Smith, Randy Bataha, flank to the bottom of the screen. Dickey gives off to Barty Smith, the flag on the play. Barty Smith to the 25-yard line, but flag's going into the air. See number 71, Jackson offside, and it's going to be against Chicago. So the Packers will take that. New England, the Jets, we gave you that score. We're keeping you posted. You said a while ago, Cleveland is really playing well against Kansas City. 30 to nothing, Cleveland over Kansas City in the second period. There's New Orleans. The Saints have a surprising lead over Los Angeles, 10 to 7. Number 73, defense. And there you see Cincinnati leading Houston 10 to nothing. Cincinnati's 2-4. They've got to win a few ball games to get back in the race. That offside was against Mark, Mike, rather, Hartenstein, the left side defensive end. First down, five. Dickey giving off to Torkelson. Torkelson hurdling people just short of the 30-yard line. Boy, he was bent backwards on that play. Don Rees, the middle linebacker, making a lot of tackles in this first half of play. Just short of the 30. It's going to bring up now second down and still a long yard to go. The Packer forward wall, Dick Himes, the veteran, number 72, a 10-year man out of Oklahoma, or rather Ohio State. Jackson, second-year man from USC. McCarron, Knutson, Concar, up front. Second down, Barty Smith trying to get the first down, and he's very close. He comes out to the 32, Reeves and Reidelch combining on the tackle for Chicago. And it is a first down Green Bay. The Packers have run the ball pretty well. But right now, trail 13 to nothing in this game. Torkelson with eight yards, Smith with 24 and eight carries. Well, the Bears were 13th out of 14 teams in the NFC against the run. Now from the 32-yard line, first down. Lynn Dickey, play action fake. Setting up the screen, Rich McGeorge, the tight end. He comes out to the 35, to the 37-yard line, and Doug Buffone dropped him there. He got a block that time from Steve Knutson, the third-year man from USC. Steve Knutson did throw a good block here as they faked the run, and then the pass out here, but the, the Mel Jackson, 71, hits Buffone up here in front. You can see and missed the block, and Buffone makes the tackle afterwards. So the play was set up well. There was just one missed block, and it cost him a few yards. But they uh, they got some out of it. They got five, to be exact. Second and five. Jeff Seavey now coming in defensively, replacing Mike Hartenstein for the Bears. Second and five. This is Nate Simpson, their number five draft pick. And Simpson brings it out to 39. He's a young man out of Tennessee State. And it's going to bring up third down as Simpson trying to get to the far side. Simpson was waived at one time. He cleared the waivers. They brought him back. They've been moving him along very slowly. And now that Harrell's out of the lineup today, they're using his quickness. Well, they miss a lot when they don't have Harrell in there because they have to have quickness to spice up that running game. Barty Smith and Eric Torkelson, good backs, but they're not speed backs. And you've got to be able to have some speed in that backfield. 
Third and three from the 39. Bataha at the bottom of the screen. Ollie Smith to the top. Dickey, look out. Here comes Hartenstein. He gets it off. Barty Smith can't make the catch. Reeves is over there to intimidate him a little bit, but Mike Hartenstein came through almost untouched on that play. Young man out of Penn State who was benched a little bit at the top uh, at the beginning of the season. You see him on a little crisscross there, and he gets through unmolested, and Dickey has to go on the run, and obviously that affected his pass. Barty Smith almost came up with a one-handed uh, snazzy catch there, but no dice as Hartenstein put on the pressure. Steve Schubert is the single safety for Chicago. Beverly to kick once again, this time from the 25-yard line. Beverly hits a spiraling kick. Schubert goes back to the 21. Getting to that wall. He is out to the 24-yard line. Askson is down there to make the tackle. Steve Wagner an assist on the play. And inside the 25, Chicago has the football. Steve Schubert earlier this year had a 70-yard punt return for a touchdown against the Detroit Lions. There's our score, 13 to nothing. Beverly been very busy as we take a look now at Steve Schubert, number 85, and Jack Party and his staff. The team with a 13 to nothing lead. The Bears had the ball inside the 25, a 40-yard kick by Beverly. Here's Abilene off to Walter Payton. Jim Carter trying to corral him, but he can't as Payton brings it out to the 30-yard line. And there was a one-on-one -on -one move that shows Payton at his very, very best. Just like a quick screen, it's almost getting him out on the end, on an end run real quick, and he's got the ball. And he cuts back on Carter here and gets an extra five, six, seven, eight, ten yards. And that's what the Bears will do with their wide receivers. With James Scott, who has not been a factor in this game, all of a sudden he may break one. But uh, Peyton has not been used as a pass receiver that much by the Bears, Gary. Abilene now three of five for 32 yards in passing. Second down, five. Abilene gives off to Walter Peyton. And Peyton just breaking tackle. Very close to the first down. Johnny Gray making his stop just short of the 35-yard line. Well, you can see the upper body strength there. He just shed a guy up above. He's got the strength, and the Packers have the fans. There is not one seat anywhere. I don't think you could get a cat in here. <laughs> well, they haven't had a seat available since 1959. That goes back away. And it's got to be 60 degrees. It's, uh, they say 52, but fans, it's 60 up here in Green Bay the 1st of November. You don't remember playing in this kind of weather, huh? Hmm. Ezra Johnson has now checked in, the rookie right defensive end for Green Bay on a third and a short yard. And Abilene's going to sneak for it, and he got it. Bob Abilene sneaking forward across the 35. Jim Carter making the tackle. Abilene a lot lighter this year, John, and a lot of people feel that's one of the reasons for his improved play. He's been able to scramble a lot more this year. He's now calling his own plays as of about three games ago, and has been a big improvement. Except last week, uh, the Bears made so many mistakes, turnovers, to uh, literally give the game to Atlanta. And I think that's what they're trying to avoid today. A very conservative game plan so far. First down, just across the 35. The sun peeking through here in Green Bay. Abilene to Walter Payton. Here he goes. Payton to the 45, the 50, and Walter Payton to the Green Bay 47-yard line. Carr and Gray finally catch up with him as he continues to pile up the yardage. And watch the middle as the Packers are completely split right open by the blocks. Dennis Lick, Reevy Sori there on a double team, make, taking two Packers out of it. Greg Latta downfield, 88, almost actually gets in the way of Walter. Walter says, get out of my way, I'm on my way. Finally, the Packers bring him down, but the line blocking was excellent. As you can see, Peyton, as he's, see there is 69 and 70 with the blocks. 64, Ted Albrick, 65, Noah Jackson. Peyton out of the lineup right now. Musso and Robin Earl, a rookie in the game. And here comes that big fullback, and I mean big. He's 6'5", 247 pounds, and he's all of that. He probably is the biggest back in the NFL, and I think that's the first time he has run the ball in the league season. That's right. Dallas and Detroit. The Cowboys unbeaten and look like they may continue that way. The ball inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Second down six as Robin Earl, the number three draft pick out of the University of Washington, picking up four yards. Abilene to Earl, and the big guy doesn't get a lot of running room this time. Dave Roller made sure of that. Roller playing here with some 
problems with a calf muscle, a torn calf muscle, and here he comes, Walter Payton. He now has 159 yards and 14 carries. And we still have just inside five minutes to go in this first half. If you figure that out mathematically, he'll end up with about 427 yards for time, a quarter and a half. Isn't that something? The ball just short of the 42. Third down, five. Payton back in, along with Musso. Heisnagel to the bottom of the screen. Scott to the top of the screen. Avellini wants to throw. Pressure put on by Butler, and down he goes. Roller got him. A flag on the play. Butler came in. Roller collapsed in. And he goes down inside the 50-yard line. But a flag has been thrown, and it's going to be against Chicago, I believe, holding. Well, the Packers did what they do best. That's rush the passer. They have 23 sacks, but see, the Bears haven't been given much of a chance to rush the passer. They haven't thrown that much. Here comes the blitz. You see Roller, Purifoy coming through. Holding. And there's right Roller tackle. to make Offense. the tackle. Decline. Right tackle. That would be Dennis Slick. He had two holding calls last week in that Atlanta game. So they're going to refuse the penalties, you might suspect, and the ball inside to the 48-yard line. And Bob Parsons with his second punt. Johnny Gray goes back. A 10-yard loss on that sack by Dave Roller. Parsons hits a fine kick. Gray at the 15-yard line. He didn't fair catch it, and he's bringing it out to the 20. Boy, he caught that ball with people coming after him. Mike Spivey out of the University of Colorado down to make the tackle. And at the 20-yard line, the Packers, trailing 13 to nothing, have the football after a 36-yard kick. Rodrigo Valdez against Penny Briscoe, the number one and two ranked contenders in the middleweight division. This is Lynn Dickey off to Nate Simpson. Simpson brings it out to the 20, breaks tackles out to the 25. Nate Simpson getting some playing time after carrying the ball only eight times previous to today. Rammed out of bounds. Over there was Jim Osborne. Going to be short of the 25 to the 24-yard line. Real nice play by Simpson as he cut back behind the block. He did a nice job. Doug Buffon, 55, was out there. Watch 55. He knows they're coming after him after Simpson catches the ball. Simpson waits. Here comes Mayor McCarron, and he takes care of Buffon, and Simpson takes advantage of the block. Good play by the Packers. They gained four, second and six at the 24. Smith to the bottom of the screen, Bataha at the top. Lynn Dickey, a little mix-up back there and all kinds of problems for Nate Simpson. He collided with Dickey, and boy, that messes your timing up. Ron Rydolch was there to be sure he didn't go any further. Now they don't draw it on the board that way. I'm sure they'll look at that in the films and say, hey, let's do it this way. Going to bring in now another defensive back on a third and six as Spivey checks in. McGeorge is coming out, so the Packers will have three wide receivers in as Odom comes in with Smith and Vataha. Third down, six yards to go. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Dickey. Got some time. And Ollie Smith broken up by Virgil Livers. They say Livers is playing very well. He's come on very strong the last couple of games. That pass had a better chance if it had been thrown more to the other side of Smith to get, let him a little bit more. They might have had a chance to uh, make a completion there. Well, Lynn Dickey now is 4 of 11 for 33 yards. And Beverly's going to kick once again. And Beverly has already kicked four times in this game. This will be his fifth kick from the 10-yard line. Karen snaps the ball. Beverly hits a lazy kick. Coming over is Schubert at the 44. And Schubert brings it inside to the Packer 48-yard line. Steve Wagner flying over to make the stop. Steve Wagner, outstanding special teams performer for the Packers. That was only a 33-yard kick. Hey, I want to remind everybody, every family has its differences. But wait until you watch the battling... Bonanos in action in tonight's edition of On Our Own, right after Rhoda, right here on CBS. I watch it all the time. Give up the middle. Here comes Peyton. Walter Peyton, short of the 45-yard line. Fred Carr making the tackle. Walter Peyton, before that last run, had 159 yards. Now, he had 160 yards the first game against Detroit, so... He's coming on to his best day of the 1977 season. And you have to wonder what the Packers are saying on the sidelines in devising a strategy to stop Walter Payton. 
Do they tell the middle linebacker, you go with Walter wherever he goes? Well, how do they adjust? They have got to adjust. Well, he's had his best day now. He has 162 yards after the last carry. Play action by Avellini. Luke has got him. Keep Luke on a blitz from his safety spot. Hit Avellini from behind. Boy, you can get hurt in those kind of plays. Oh, yes. It's Katie bar the door. Watch number 46 as he comes from the outside here. And Avellini doesn't even see him because he's coming from the blind side. But his arm was going forward, so it would not be a fumble. But the backers came up with a, a little tricky blitz, and that's what... Uh, as you see Bart Starr saying to himself, that's the way we drew that one up. But you know, Atlanta did that to the Bears last week and had success with it. The Bears have protected quarterbacks very well. They allowed only nine sacks coming into this game last year, line only 24. But the Packers showing their ability to rush the passer. Third down now, seven. Abilene back again. Pressure put on. Flag on the play. Bashnagel. Covered that time very well by Mike McCoy at the 31-yard line. But a flag throw just about the time the play developed. The illegal procedure against Chicago. You could see that time very good penetration by Dave Purifoy, who's playing his best football. Well, ironically, in the last few minutes, the Bears have kind of played into the Packers' hands by starting to throw the ball more. And consequently, that pass rush of the... Illegal left. motion, left tackle, offense, decline. We have fourth down. Now to finish my sentence, the, uh, consequently, you have the Packers looking better on defense because what they do best is what the Bears are running into. So Johnny Gray will go back at the 10-yard line for this kick from Bob Parsons. Parsons coming in here ninth in the NFC in punting, just a little over a 39-yard average. Parsons hits a oh. beauty. Gray's going to let it hit and hopes it makes it in, and it's not going to. It's going to take a bare bounce back out to the four-yard line. Brian Bashnagel is down there to kill it. What a kick that time by Bob Parsons. He got exactly the kind of English he wanted to get on that one. Well, that's uh, the natural surface, regular good old grass, as far as the Bears were concerned. If that had been an artificial surface, it probably would have bounced much more one way or the another. So you never know how it's going to work out. The field is in excellent condition. On the CBS Sports Spectacular, John, we're going to have the Washington, D.C. International Race from the Laurel Race Course in Maryland. The 26th running of this classic. And then the world's strongest man. They're going to throw an automobile tire, which weighs 35 pounds in weight. And that world's strongest man has been something to watch. First down, 10. Here comes Nate Simpson, and Simpson out to the nine-yard line. Pretty good run by the rookie. He's been impressive in this first half. Doug Flank there to make the tackle for Chicago. Just short of the 10-yard line, mark it at the nine. Good pulling job by Steve Knudsen, and Flank came over from his safety spot to stop that play, but that was well executed by the Packers. And by the way, I never heard of a tire weighs 35 pounds. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's heavy. We have the two-minute warning here in the first half of play as Lynn Dickey trots over to talk to Bart Starr. The Chicago Bears lead the Packers 13 to nothing. So with two minutes left now in this first half, the Packers have a second down six. John, we were checking a while ago. Looks like the Bears have sustained injuries here in this first half of play. Roland Harper has a sore knee. I hope it's not too sore, but he's been out of the game. You can see him to the right of Walter Payton. He has a jacket on, and he's kind of handling his right knee. So apparently... Uh, he hurt that. And, and Bo Rather, I guess, has been shaken. Yes. Bo Rather taken out earlier after getting his bell rung. And now at the nine-yard line, the Packers with two minutes have a second down and six. From the end zone, Barty Smith. There's Nate Simpson, the running backfield with him. Two tight ends, Aston and McGeorge. And here comes Barty Smith. And Smith hammers it out to the 13-yard line. That's going to be short of that first down. Don Reeves again making the tackle for the Bears. So it's third down and still a yard to go. There's your time as you see it on the right hand side of your screen. Packers just like to get out of here and maybe hang on to that 13 to nothing lead or trailing 13 to nothing I should say. Again in the backfield Simpson and Barty Smith. Third down a long yard to go. Barty Smith trying to get wide. And he's got that first down. Barty Smith brings it out to the 20-yard line. Steve Knudsen, one of the two USC guards starting in this Packer forward wall, made quite a block on that play. 
See he's, the time ticking away now. He's been playing on a bad ankle, and it sure doesn't look at the way he's been pulling out there. The crowd booing, John, because they think the Packers are being too conservative. But right now, trailing 13 to nothing, they're just trying to get some operating room. They come out with Ollie Smith to the bottom of the screen, Vataha to the top, McGeorge in a tight end. Lynn Dickey going to throw now. Chase is on, and it's incomplete. And I'll tell you, he had pressure from everyone. Jim Osborne, Hartenstein was in there. He was throwing that ball as he was headed downward. Well, Hartenstein jumped up there to obstruct Dickey's view. As you see, 73 here, and it was pretty tough there. There was a lot of pressure by the Bears. And now maybe you know why Bart Starr is trying to run the ball out <laughs> with 37 seconds to go. Second down, 10. Dennis Havig now has checked in at a guard spot for Green Bay. You see the time with 37 seconds left. Dickey over the middle. Barty Smith had it for a moment. Barty Smith is a fine receiver. He caught a remarkable touchdown catch earlier this year. That time couldn't hang on. It's third down. He may have had his hands crossed the wrong way. Now you see Reeves, the middle linebacker, dropping off. They try and throw underneath the coverage. You'll see Barty Smith come out. That was a tough catch. That's, it's funny, from this angle, we couldn't tell that on the regular play, but on the replay, you could see that was a tough catch. He had to reach that hand out, and it looked like uh, from a distance that he just dropped it. Now George comes out as the Packers now have three wide receivers in on a third and 10 at the 20. Lynn Dickey with 33 seconds left the first half running. He's being chased by Jerry Myers. He's going to get out of bounds. Also, Jeff Seavey was over there. And Dickey loses yardage all the way inside the 10-yard line. That time, he hardly had time to look up the field. That's right. The Bears had uh, uh, penetration on the rush that time. Jeff Seavey, who's played offense, mostly playing a little bit of defense. Jerry Myers, who's been out with a bad ankle. And the Packers are in a bad situation because they have to punt with 26 seconds left. And the Bears could fair catch and possibly go for a field goal. That was an 11-yard loss on the play. And Beverly now standing inside his own end zone. And the rush is coming. And he will be kicking against the wind. The rush is coming. Schubert is back at the 45. Here they come. Beverly got it away. Fine kick. Schubert going back, makes a fair catch. That'd be a long Boy, field that was goal. A long a long punt. <laughs> they came very close to getting this one, John. Ashnagel coming from the outside. His angle is correct. Come in front of the punter. Takes the leap. But Beverly just got it away. And a nice one, too. All the way out to midfield. In fact, back into Bear territory. 41-yard kick by Beverly under pressure. And the ball now at the Chicago 49. You know, everyone knows that science can split the atom, but tomorrow, Jessica falls into the clutches of a society that can split human beings into two creatures, one good, the other evil. Which one triumphs? Watch Logan's Run tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central Time. Do you remember the year when Paul Horning, when they, they uh, fair caught the Packers did against the Bears and kicked a field goal right before the half? The Packers tried it a few years ago in the Astrodome with Chester Marcole, but he missed it. But it is something you can do, but that's just too far. A 41-yard kick. 20 seconds left. Bob Avellini with his team leading 13 to nothing. Latta, and Latta now at the 30, and now field goal possibilities. With 11 seconds left, Steve Wagner made the stop, and Greg Latta having a very good first half. Avellini hit him right on the numbers, too. That ball was perfect because Latta was well covered on the play. When the ball was in there, he wrapped around it. And the Bears have a chance for the field goal. Have called timeout. Latta, three catches, 27 yards. Timeout is called, 11 seconds. Bob Thomas has hit seven of 10 field goals this year. He is third in the NFC in scoring with 33 points. 11 seconds left, his team with a 13 to nothing lead. And Bob Avellini in this first half has hit 50% of his passes. He's four of eight for 54 yards. He has suffered the one interception. That was the first drive of the game when Mike McCoy picked one off at the one-yard line. But right now, the offense of the Bears has been something. Peyton, 162 yards. Next week, Dallas against the Giants in that NFC Eastern Division. New Orleans, Philadelphia, the Saints really a lot of offense. 
San Francisco against surprising Atlanta. And then our doubleheader has Chicago against the Houston Oilers. St. Louis, Minnesota, that will really be a big one. Tampa Bay against Los Angeles. Tampa Bay still looking for that first win. Lost 20 in a row now, I believe, losing last week to the Green Bay Packers. Next week, the NFL on CBS. From the 30, well, they're going to run a play here, John, with 11 seconds, and then possibly set up the field goal attempt. Abilene looking to throw. James Scott. That was just kind of one of those head for the corner. I'll throw it over there. So seven seconds, still left, and now they're going to bring in Bob Thomas. Sometimes you can get kind of greedy in those situations, but... They tried to pull one off for six points, and now they're going to try to get three. And it looks like it'll be about a 46-yard field goal. The wind must be 10 or 15 miles an hour in Thomas's favor. There's a wind behind him. He kicked a 40-yard field goal last week. And this is going to be a 47-yarder. Bob Thomas, will attempt a Bob Thomas with goal. seven seconds left in the first half. Flash Nagel a hole. The kick by Bob Thomas is on the way, and they think they've got it, and they do. They were signaling three points. Flash Nagel and Thomas, and Thomas is really excited about it. Jumping up and down, and now with two seconds left, it's a 16 to nothing game as Bob Thomas salvaging three points. This young man from Notre Dame, really excited. Yes, he has taken his wraps the last year or two. There's been some key field goals that have been missed and extra points that have been blocked. And they talk about the trajectory of the ball and everything and because he is a sidewinder. But uh, that one had to be very, provide a lot of satisfaction for him. Not the Green Bay Packers who now must score three times, two touchdowns and a field goal for any kind of a chance to win. They have not done much offensively or defensively, the Packers. Unless the Bears have thrown and they've been able to show ability to put pressure on the passer, which they've done all year long. As Pardee gives Bob Thomas instructions with two seconds to go, he probably doesn't want to give him a chance to return it, so he's going to tell him to kick a squibber or something along that order. Well, one thing historically that's not in favor of Green Bay is they have not had good second halves. In fact, they've scored only 10 points in the entire second half thus far in 1977. In six games. So they've got a lot of catching up to do in this one, trailing 16 to nothing. Bob Thomas will be kicking with two seconds. After that 47-yard field goal, Thomas now 8 of 11 for the year, and that's very fine percentage. Now, Odom is back there, and he's a guy that has burned the Bears several times over the past couple of years, but I'm sure they're not going to get the ball to him. There he is, number 84 on your screen. Let's see what Thomas is going to do. And you guessed it, John. He's going to squib it around. Steve Wagner goes high, brings it down, and he's going to be brought down at the 35. Or Willie, look at this effort. Steve Wagner just stays on his feet all the way out to the 50-yard line. So the first half has come to a close here with the Chicago Bears leading the Green Bay Packers 16 to nothing. Quite a display by Walter Payton as the fans here, this capacity crowd, unhappy. Walter Payton, 15 carries, 162 yards in this first half, complemented by the passing of Bob Abilene, 4 of 9 for 54 yards. Greg Latta, the big receiver, with three for 49 in this first half of play. So Green Bay in a catch-up situation, trailing 16 to nothing. The Bears doing exactly, John, what they were going to do, their game plan, and that's run Walter Payton. And I think they'll do that in the second half. Bart Starr has to take his team back in there and figure out what they're going to do. Lynn Dickey is four for 13 for 33 yeah. yards for the entire first half, and that's not much in the way of passing statistics. Running-wise, they haven't done much either. The best is Barty Smith with 10 for 36. They've gained 48 yards overall in rushing. So it's been a nil game for the Green Bay Packers, and you have to wonder, Bart Starr apparently has a contract through 1980. Uh, outside of Green Bay, they say he's in trouble. In Green Bay, they say he's not in so much trouble. Well, let's look at some scores now, Johnny. Minnesota, Atlanta, 7-7. Not very many people scoring very many points against Atlanta. They have a good defense, and Minnesota, if Minnesota happened to drop that game, they would be four and three. 
which would mean the winner of this game would be three and four and only one game out of first place in the cent Central Division. Washington 23 to 10 over Philadelphia. The Redskins have to win that. George Allen would uh, go bananas if they didn't. You know, Mark Mosley had a 51-yard field goal in that game, adding the last three points. So it's halftime here in Green Bay. The Chicago Bears trying to win game number three of the year lead 16 to nothing. The seating announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Well, Johnny Morris, the big talk here at halftime is what can Walter Payton accomplish before the afternoon is over? He's zeroing in on some real, real big marks. He's already passed Bronco Nagurski and Ronnie Bull for all-time career rushing. He is now fourth on the all-time bear list for career rushing, and he's only in his third year in the NFL. Bob Thomas kicking off. Over on the fly comes Steve Odom for the Packers. Odom brings it out to the 20. A flag on the play. Another flag on the play. And Odom winds his way out to the 32-yard line. But two flags are thrown as Odom's forward progress goes to the 32, clipping against Green Bay. So that'll bring that one back. Well, to get back to Walter Payton, his best output in a single game is 183 yards. So if he would go for 22 more yards before the afternoon's over, that would be a personal one-game high for him. You saw just a moment ago on the screen, he needs 112 yards to break O.J.'s record. That record, I believe, is 273 yards. We have a personal yards. foul. Clipping 51 on the run back. First down. So the penalty on Jim Gano, the linebacker. Moves the ball back, and the Packers inherit very poor field position at the 11-yard line. Just underway, second half, 16 to nothing, Chicago. Flag on the play as Barty Smith able to spin his way to the 14-yard line. Right Elch and Don Reeves, and that combination, we've been speaking to them quite frequently in this game. Ball out to the 14. Chicago was offside, so they're going to get five yards on that play to bring the ball outside the 15 to the 16. As you look at that offensive line of Green Bay, Pat Haggerty, our official. You know, you're talking about the wonderful weather here in Green Bay. It is warm for Green Bay, but it is getting offside. a little chilly. Defense. First down. How can you say that? It is so beautiful. It's perfect for football. It's not chilly at all, fans. <laughs> okay. Second down or make that first down and five after the five-yard penalty out to the 16-yard line. Ollie Smith and Bataha flanked wide for Lynn Dickey. Dickey gives off to Nate Simpson, and Simpson hammers his way to the 19-yard line. The ball is loose, I believe. Let's see. They're scrambling around at the 19-yard line area. Simpson had to make it out to the 21 for the first down, but the Packers have retained possession. Looked like Dennis Havig, the veteran who used to play for the Atlanta Falcons and the Houston Oilers. He's the guy that got on the ball, and at the 19-yard line, they're two yards short of the first down. Second and two. Barty Smith, the leading rusher in this game for the Packers with 36, and after that, nobody's in double figures for Green Bay. They haven't been able to get that rushing game going. They're 14th in the NFC in that department. Marty Smith again, and Smith cuts it back, and he's got the first down. And the Packers needed that, Johnny, to get something going for him. They certainly did. They almost didn't get it. Billy Newsom knocked him off stride as Mark Concord was blocking, and you'll see Billy Newsom put a hand on him, but it's just good, hard running by Barty Smith. He cut inside there because he saw Newsom and was able to bounce his way forward and get the first down. Good running by Barty Smith. That moves the ball out to the 24-yard line. Bataha to the bottom, Smith to the top of the screen. Play action fake, wide, wide open. open, Bataha, and this little guy is dangerous in the open field. Dropped at the 40-yard line by Alan Ellis. Randy Bataha, who played so well for the New England Patriots for so many years, making that catch. Well, Alan Ellis was playing way off as you watch the bottom of your screen. Partial rollout as Bataha came across, no coverage whatsoever. There might have been a little bit of a mix-up. They both were playing off so deep. Madaha was so open, he didn't know where to go. Good play. 17-yard pickup to the 41-yard line. Pataha's ninth catch of the year. They picked him up on waivers on September 14th from New England. Eric Torkelson now in the backfield, along with Barty Smith on a first down. There's a delay to Barty Smith and the big fullback across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Osborne and Reeves making the tackle. And now you're seeing the value of Barty Smith Inside, run him north and south, and boy, he can go. Legs driving, get that extra yardage for him. Don Reeves finally on the tackle, but not before he got six, seven yards. 
Well, he has 46 yards now on 12 carries as he brings up a second and five. He came in 21st in the NFC in rushing from the 46th, second and five. 